All right, so for day two of the class, uh, I'm going to show you again what we should do as soon as we come in. So every time you come into this lab, you want to do these following steps just to uh, prep your computer so that it will then compile faster next time. So first thing, you want to go to your Start menu and launch the Node command prompt. So go to Start and search Node command prompt and start the node.js command prompt. You want to make sure we're in the command prompt. This would be similar to a uh, at-home setup. We need to do this every time we come in here just because of deep freeze. But when you're at right. home, you just do it once and it's done. So like this. Yeah, in the command prompt. All right. Yes. It's best to have the node.js command prompt, yes. That has because it says here, your environment has been set up for using node.js. So at the regular command prompt, it'll probably work, but this is the way that you're sure it will work. All right, so I'm in the command prompt, and the first thing, uh, I'm in the instructor folder, you're in your lab folder. We need to, uh, just to even make it faster, I'm going to just do it in the folder. We can do it in the desktop, but just to do it very quickly from here, we'll type Cordova space create anything. Z, 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 press enter. Cordova create whatever. I'm calling it Z, Z, Z. That should always happen pretty fast. That's not complex. What, ha what will take a little longer next is CD, Z, Z, Z. I'm changing directory into the folder. Whatever you call the folder. My project, my app, whatever cd z, 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 enter that should show you're in your folder and this we're, we're not even gonna we're gonna delete it as soon as we're done with it but we just need to do this to prep our workstation we'll do cordova platform add android space browser i'm adding the android operating system and the browser operating system at once. This would be the same as Cordova platform add Android and let that all happen and then Cordova platform add browser. I'm doing them both at the same time simply by saying that. If I was on a Mac I could also then space iOS. Can't do it here, we're not on a Mac. But we can add the different operating systems here. Cordova platform add Operating system one, space, operating system two, space, whatever. It's a. Uh, Cordova platform add Android, space browser. Press enter on that. All right, so this one obviously is the one that's taking a moment. So that's what I'm saying. We're going to come into the room. We're going to do this as soon as possible to get all of this working. Hopefully, you don't get a big scary error like mine. I have to figure that out in a moment. No, you still need the, the terminal is just the software where you're going to type all of this stuff out. Yeah. 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 
it's not a problem. <laughs> All right, so I got a big old red scary message. Uh, failed to fetch platform. Probably this is even a connection problem. Yeah, it's probably a connection problem. We're all doing it at the same time, so maybe we're crashing our network. So just do it one more time. Press up on the keyboard to bring back your last command. Just try it again. We may have to try it a couple of times. Some of us got through. Some of us didn't. Good luck. Did everyone get the roster? Did everyone sign in on the red roster? Where's the other sign of sheep? All right, so on mine, it seems like they might behave. So sometimes, for some reason, you just do the exact same step again, and it works the subsequent time. You might have heard the, uh, the phrase that uh, madness is defined as uh, doing the same thing more than once and expecting a different result. Well, in computer topics, that might not be a big problem. Quick question, are you enrolled? Um, is this the SEO? Nope, the SEO class was an hour ago. Let me show you here what you need because this is a different class. Let's... Oh, first, So eventually, uh, if this worked, you get no feedback, that you don't get any congratulations feedback, but you definitely get feedback if it didn't work in big red scary letters. Question? Uh, I can't open yes. Node.js. Don't open Node.js, open Node command prompt. So when you're trying to search for Node, don't open Node.js, open Node.js command prompt. So they're slightly different. Uh, they're different development environments. So raise your hand if you eventually got back to the command prompt and it worked like mine. <coughs> Most people. Anyone having any trouble? Did you get that? the red letters? That's what you need to do every time you come in because you saw it takes a moment. So you want to do these steps uh, every time. Question?
Did everyone get the sign in sheet, the, the time sheet? All right, everyone, so at this point, uh, the, the basic process was done. And then just to completely confirm it, uh, what you also want to do, uh, we didn't do this one last time, but you also want to do this, Cordova built. This will process it. This will compile the basic app. That's another step we'll do a few times throughout the day. The subsequent times are done faster. So you want to do Cordova build and enter. And that one's the one that's also going to take a moment. I should have mentioned it already. But that one's also going to take a moment to connect up to the server and then get the latest version of the code and all of that. So as that's going, I'm going to write it down here on a notepad file so that you can see. So steps to start off every day in the lab. You don't have to do this every time at home because it's it's your own computer and it remembers, it saves these steps. But here we have deep freeze, so we need to do it every time we come in. Search start for Node.js command prompt. Not Node.js. Um, and then you type. Okay, on the Mac, in Mac, just start terminal. Uh, I don't. I don't think you'll have a Node command prompt on the Mac. You just go to your terminal. So then we will type there uh, in the terminal. We'll type Cordova, create, you know, xxx, zzz, whatever. I'll call it whatever. That creates a folder called whatever and a basic project with nothing inside of it. CD, whatever. We need to change into the whatever folder to do any of the subsequent steps. Um, uh, 
which is Cordova platform add Android browser. We're going to be working in this class in, in Android, and as I've explained last time, we only have Windows computers here. We need a Mac to be able to create a Mac version of the project, but we can easily add the Mac version. We can walk over to room 207, have a field trip maybe one day, and then just add the software onto it, and then the project has, has the iOS. And I'm also then adding browser, the web browser, so I can debug it faster. We can debug in a variety of ways, but I think debugging in Chrome in the browser is very fast, very efficient. So Cordova platform add Android browser. After all of these, of course, I'm pressing enter. And when all of that's done, Cordova build. Let's see, mine is still building right there. So that's why you want to do this. You want to do these steps in the beginning of the day. These steps were done on January 2nd or whatever when I came in here to set up all the computers but it's been you know we're in March now the software updates and we we have deep freeze so the computers are locked at the beginning of every semester or else there would be all of these changes to them throughout the whole semester so you have to do this when you come in here so just wait for yours to Process. But on ours, like if we have a Mac, we don't have to do all of them, or do we have to do all of them every day too? You have to do them one time. On the one time? Mm-hmm. You can you can do more than once, but they should be in different folders. Mm. When this Yes, if we want a completely different app, we do the Cordova Create App 2. Okay. And every other step. <coughs> when this is done, after the build, you could then do Cordova. So then we'll do here optional Cordova Emulate Android, which runs the emulator of the test app, of the whatever app. Or you could do Cordova run browser, runs Google Chrome emulator. And we'll look at this today, and it, it should probably work if you've got one of these borrowed tablets plugged in and we will see it deeper today, Cordova run Android space dash dash device runs in a connected and configured real device. Your own device may not work, probably won't work, by doing run Android device because your device has not been configured. <coughs> which we'll talk about it today. These tablets, they should all be configured. Well, hopefully they will then just run easily with that command. But I'm still waiting for mine. My Pac-Man dots are still there. But you have you, has yours finished this step yet, Cordova build? If it did, then you can try Cordova emulate or Cordova run browser or Cordova run Android. But I'll, I'll have to wait a moment. This is what we want to do as soon as you walk in. I'll try to get here to turn on everyone's computer right away. And then when you sit down, do these steps just so that your environment is ready to go. And you only have to do them here. At home, once this is done once, it should then be fast every subsequent time. And so we'll go through our workflow when this is all done. Any questions so far? How many of you uh, are Yes. Yes. Um, how many of you tried to do this at home? Raise your hand. Most people. How many of you did it work? One and one and a half hands. Not the emulator. Okay. But you did the other steps. Okay. 
and that's good. Do you have a real device you can test with? An old Android. Did you tr did you try that on your? Yeah, I I think yours is very close to working properly. Anyone else kind of almost got it working at home? So definitely try it at home. Obviously, these computers have already been set up. I was here a few hours during my vacation to set them all up so that everyone's works just fine in the room at home. This is the problem. Everyone's got different computers. Right here, we've got 32 exactly the same computers. So all of this works in our lab here. And pretty much every time then when, when students go home and try it on their own computers, there's always little stumbling blocks. Things are could be that, well, I've got a Mac versus Windows. I've got an Intel CPU versus an AMD CPU. I've only got 2 gigs of RAM and we've got 4 gigs of RAM. There's so much variation on your own home computer that this, this is so, such a wild card if it'll work as seamlessly as it does for us here. But I'll address some of those issues in a moment because I'm running out of things to say, waiting for this to finish, and eventually it'll finish. While that's running there, what I'll also do, let's take a moment, if yours is not quite done yet like mine, also let's go to the web and let's go back to the Cordova documentation. What's that? Well, it's got to use your CPU and your memory, so it's pretty intensive. The better computer you have, the better. It has to create a folder. When you do Cordova create, it creates a folder, definitely. Let's go to cordova.apache.org. And the documentation. The one where we will spend uh, time on, if it's not quite working for you at home, develop for platform. Now this is telling you how to set yourself up to develop an Android app. This is not saying, you know, go to iOS to set your to set up your computer, your iOS computer. This is saying if you want to make apps for iOS on whatever platform, go here. If you want to make Android apps on your Mac or your Windows computer, go here. So these are the kinds of apps you will create, and it'll explain to you how to set that up on your computer. I'm going to go look at Android. Hopefully you looked at some of these. So, okay, a lot of explanation. Great. Requirements. So you are going to need Java on your computer. So you're going to then go off to their link, download it, install Java, as it tells you how to do that. It says here at least seven or higher. In the command prompt, actually, you can uh, you can check that. You can do um, normal command. Uh, you can do Java dash version. I opened a different window. And here this says I've got Java 1.8. So you need at least 1.7 for this to work. It uh, should have Java space dash version. In this lab, I wouldn't worry about it because it's already set up, but at home, that's what you want to type. What's happening behind the scenes as this processing is going on, there's a lot zooming by, and then there's going to be parts in here that say um, accessing the, you know, the Android SDK. That's basically the software, the, the code. Uh, it's accessing the code to actually compile. That's when you need the Android 
SDK, Software Development Studio, or Android Studio. So you need one of those two installed. You need Java installed. You need the Android SDK, either one of those. And then it tells you, once you've got that installed, we'll, we'll see how this looks like in a moment. Once you've got this installed, you need to then have at least version 19 of the Android SDK. Setting environment variables. Tells you how to do that there. These commands that we're typing here, the reason that we're able to type Cordova and it does it is because it's part of the environment path. Uh, that's a really old school concept because here on Windows, if I want to run Chrome, I see Chrome right there and I double click it. But in the command prompt, it assumes whatever folder you are in is the command that you're running. So if you set up your your environment path, you will be able to type the software, the command, Cordova, from any folder. That's what that instruction is telling you right there about setting your environment variables, being able to launch the software from any folder. If you don't do this part, you have to be inside the Android folder to run the Android commands. I'm on the desktop, for example, because the path has been set up. I'll show you how that looks in a moment. I'm just doing an overview first. How to do it in Windows, setting an emulator, configuring Gradle. This part you don't have to worry about at all, really. Just make a note. Just skip this whole part about Gradle. It works just fine at home. version code, you don't have to worry about that. Signing the app, we'll do that much later. That's at the point when we're ready to publish our app as a real app to put to the real app stores. We have to put a, a password, the app gets compressed, all that stuff for much later. But for at home, you need to install Java. So you follow the link, you install Java. You follow the link to Android and get one of these two and install it. On ours, if you want to see that, go to your computer, go to the desktop, open computer, open the local disk C, and then you'll see a folder called Android. When I followed the step that it said download Android SDK and install it, I installed it on these computers on the C drive, right at the root level. The default, I think, when you install it, it wants to put it into your libraries folder or somewhere, somewhere in your user folder. Wherever it goes is fine, as long as you know where it is. So you sometimes you have to open the folder to, to use it. What's inside of it? So I like to just put it on the C drive. If you open Android, you'll see SDK. So there it is from January, twenty fourth. SDK and then a bunch of stuff in here. Tools, there's emulators and all of that stuff. Build tools, all this complex stuff, but this is something that you need in order for it for all of this to work. The actual Android code. This one just out of curiosity. 3 gigabytes. So the, the Android operating system code installed takes about 3, three gigabytes. Mm -hmm. So the Android SDK is installed, adding SDK packages. After installing the SDK, you must also install these packages. The way that's done. Yes? Well, that's what we're going to see right now. So, uh, one way to check it is when I'm in the command prompt, type Android. That will launch the SDK manager. It's, it's in here somewhere. 
in the Android folder SDK. It's in here somewhere. But again, this is one of the powerful reasons why we use the command prompt. I just type Android and it'll do it. It'll go to the right app, it'll launch the right thing, instead of me having to poke around, where's that folder, where did I install it, it's under tools, I'm going in here, oh here it is, Android Bat. That's what I'm not ultimately launching by drilling down into the folder, but if we set it up as per the instructions, I just type Android, and it pops up what I need, that. In this case, in our case, in this lab, we've got Android SDK Tools 25.2.5. Yours may be slightly different, don't worry about it. At home, it might be 25.3 or something. It's going to be different because when this was set up in January, that's what was the latest. If you try to do it now, two months later, it may be slightly different, and that's okay. And we've got here Android 7.1. SDK platform installed. So we've got the latest Android Nougat, the latest version of Android. We could install these other other ones for testing purposes, <coughs> all the way down to Android 2.1. But what I've got installed here is what we need, what, what you get at home. The default should work, but the handout here, or the d document here is saying we need at least Android 19 or higher. And again, we have Build Tools Android 25. There's 19, that's the minimal one, but we don't need it. We've got the newest one. The, um, the thing is that when you get home and you do this, it'll probably recommend for you to do some updates, like me. Mine is saying right here, Google API, we've got version 3 and it's saying version 4. In this lab, you don't need to do any updates. It's a waste of time. Because the next time you come back, it will have reverted back to version 3. So you wasted your time and effort and bandwidth. At home, you can decide to do updates. But what I'll say here is, avoid doing updates in the middle of production. So in the lab, don't do updates in the Android SDK. At home, you may do them if you're not in the middle of a project. If I'm building my app at home, and then I pop in here and it says, you, you need version 3, you're in version 2, don't update. Keep working on your project, make sure it's all done, release it to the wild and such, and then think about updating your, your software. Because this stuff here, the Android SDK, is the basic foundation of your software. And every few versions, Google decides to change things. They may delete old versions of the code or the commands or the tools or something, and then your project relied on it, so now you threw away that piece that was necessary. And oftentimes, there's new commands and new versions of the code and such, so you're, you're changing the foundation you're standing on in the middle of you working on a project. So after your project is completed, signed, published, think about doing an update after reading the documentation. It may not be worth it to you to update your code base here, your, your SDK. Uh, you don't need those features, or there's something new to learn, and you don't want to, to do it, that's fine. You can keep running the same version behind the scenes as long as you want, but eventually the code is deprecated and deactivated and such. So any, anything that it recommends updates here, don't do it in the lab. Uh, the documentation then says setting up these environment variables. So how do we set it up to actually be able to type the commands here without going to the right folder? It says here, Cordova's CLI, the command line, the prompt, 
tools require some environment variables to be set in order to function properly. The CLI will attempt to set the variables for you, but in certain cases you may need to set them manually. The way this is done on, on Mac or Linux is explained there, on Windows it's explained here. To take a look at it here on Windows, we can go to the Start menu and start typing environment. Let's give this a quick look. Go to your Start menu, type environment, and you will see Edit System Environment Variables. Go to the System Environment Variables. In this window here, click on Edit or click on Environment Variables, Environment Variables button. So here, in this case, there is a variable called environment, uh, Android Home, and it's set to the C drive, the folder Android, the subfolder SDK. If this is not properly set up for you at home automatically by following the previous steps, this is telling you this is what you need to do at home. You need to click New, Environment Name, Android Home, and then the path to the to the folder. So if this installed into your folder in the you know into your user folder and you made a folder called my environment my my SDK and inside of there you made a folder called fall 2016 and inside of there you, you made a folder called version 1 well your environment variable needs to be that path. That's why when I installed the Android SDK I chose simply the C drive so that the path is C colon backslash Android backslash SDK. So notice my example here. The documentation says you need a variable for your Android SDK and a path to it. There it is. In this lab. On your own home computer, I don't know how you set it up. It's probably something like just a kind of guess. C user Johnny slash dev. You know, whatever you called it when you set it up. Whatever you call it. Question. So it's something that is on the terminal, how, uh, how to open the file that you already created? Uh, that's getting a little off topic for the moment. Let me finish the process of here of talking about setting everything up. But it's doing CD. Well, you need to type the name of the folder of your project that is the name of your project. But again, we'll, we'll come back to that. In here, there's also a Java home. That variable should have set, it, should have set itself also when you install Java. If it didn't, notice the way that's set up. Java home, Java underscore home, capital, and then the path to your Java installation. C drives backslash program files backslash Java backslash version 180121. I think like version 132 is out or something. So, whatever your version at home. That's what this is saying. So it is, it is rather technical, honestly, it is complicated, but that's what I said day one. Making an app, especially the cross-platform app, is difficult and complicated. That's why we'll have plenty of time in the lab at the end of the day if you want to bring in your own system and we can try to figure it out. If you've got a laptop at home, it's a little harder to troubleshoot you that way. But you can email me, try taking screenshots of what you're looking at and sending them in an email. and try to figure it out, but all the documentation is here. It's set up. I followed all of these steps to set, to set them all up on these computers. I've been teaching this class since 2013, and I have people all the time that they, they struggle, but eventually it all works out. And once it's all set up properly, it's pretty smooth after that. It's just the initial setup because we want to go cross-platform. If we only wanted to make an Android app, just download Android Studio and you're done. If you just want to make an iOS app, just download Xcode, and you're done. If you just want to make you know, a Windows app, just download Visual Studio, and you're done. But we want to make apps for every platform, and it takes setup. 
in this documentation here. I was looking back at the ones that I was going to give you and I thought, you know, this is way better just for you to go here. This is the latest version. I was trying to kind of distill it all down and I'm like, well, you know, this is all here. It is wordy, but you want to look at it here. And I'll have other handouts for other little things, but your setup, really, uh, even when I was giving these detailed handouts, people will, would still come to me and say, it doesn't work on my computer. I sit down and help them, and then it eventually works. We can still do that. Uh, one more thing, then we'll take a break. Um, I see it here. Oh, okay, emulator. If you wish to run your Cordova app on an Android emulator, you first need to create an Android virtual device. See the Android documentation for managing AVDs and the instructions. Once your AVD is configured correctly, you should be able to see it by running this command. Uh, let's give this one a, a try. Let's see what happens here. Cordova run list. Oh, well, actually, if you've still got your... Um, if you still got this running, this SDK has captured your uh, your command prompt, right? So you can do Control C to get a hold of it again, or close that window for a moment, just like we did with the browser. Control C a couple of times. That will bring your focus back to your command. Cordova run space dash dash list. Available Android devices. Um, I got an error. Did you get an error or did yours work? You got the error too. Hmm. Okay, well. Last time everyone's emulator ran and it should run again this time. I'm not sure why it's saying this error, but that's okay. What's that? If you're on the Mac, oftentimes your command prompt is a dollar sign. Here on Windows, it's this. But on, on the Mac or others, you may just have a dollar sign. Uh, let's do here in the command prompt again. Let's type Android again. That'll bring back the Android SDK. Then at the top, let's go to Tools, Manage AVDs. Manage the virtual devices. Okay, so there's a Nexus device. Didn't find it for some reason. It's there, kind of. But um, this is the screen where we create virtual devices. We have one ready to go. Let's take a moment to create another one to show you that process. Um, because I may have a real device to test with but I want to test on a tablet. I don't, I don't have a tablet. We can make a tablet device. The way we do that is here. Let's go to the tab device definitions. There's all of these templates. An Android TV, Android Wear watches, Nexus tablet, etc. Let's all create uh, one that I'm going to tell you about. But there's all of these possible ones. Let's create one of these down here. If you scroll down, there is 3.2 inch QVGA ADP2. This is like a very basic, um, generic Android device. The reason I mentioned this one is because these other ones that are more interesting, like the Android TV and such, this says this is going to create a device HD quality using 2 gigabytes of RAM. These are 2 gigabytes of RAM on your computer. So whatever your computer is currently using, this is going to borrow 2 gigabytes. 
I'm choosing down here one of these lower end ones just to just to test it out because I often find that if a person can get this running on their home computer, this whole development process should work pretty well. If your computer, if your home computer, if your home computer struggles with this very generic basic Android device, you're gonna have a hard time doing anything else. Your computer might be a little bit underpowered. Yes? It's both. This is the RAM that is going to be set aside for the virtual device we're going to create. And that RAM comes from your main computer. This is going to create a 3.2-inch a basic Android device with one quarter of a gigabyte of RAM. You want to click one time to select it, and then on the top right, Create AVD. There's a bunch of options here that could be set. The name, that's fine. The device should say 3.2, that's fine. The target Android 7, that's fine. CPU, that's fine. You shouldn't really change any of those. That's, that's what we saw in the SDK. We saw that that's what's installed, so that's what we're going to use. If we had Android 2.0 installed, we would be able to select it from here. But we'll just leave it as is hardware keyboard. Well, I don't want to have to click every single letter when I'm testing my messaging app. I want to type on the keyboard. So that's on. Skin. Just choose the first one. What sort of like design on your window of your Android device do you want? You know, you can have the template. You can have it look like these sorts of devices. But just choose the first one. This older device does not have a front-facing camera, so you can't take selfies on it. It's that old. But you could have a back camera. If you're doing this on your laptop, where they often have a camera built in, you might want to take off that piece of tape from it and use it to act like you're using a real uh, camera. So we'll have a virtual device that can that can access the real camera hardware to fully test a camera. If I don't have a camera on my desktop computer, let's say, where I'm working, I can do emulate it. It'll be really boring, but we will see it like a virtual little camera to kind of look like we're taking a photo. Yes? Mm -hmm. That'll work too. Yeah, if you plug in an, an external webcam, this this will work. Memory options, don't change that. Internal storage, we have a whole 200 megabytes of internal storage. Don't change that, doesn't matter. SD card, let's pop in an SD card. Uh, 99 megabytes, whatever, doesn't matter. We don't even make these, they haven't made these for 15 years. But we're going to put in a 99 megabyte memory card, SD card, into the virtual device. Emulate option, snapshot, snapshot, don't worry about that yet. Use host GPU. Now, these little things are mini computers in our pockets. And what we're about to do is create it inside of our regular computer. It will borrow some of our CPU, it'll borrow some of our RAM, it'll borrow some of the hard drive of the main computer for a little mini computer. Therefore, we could slow down your whole system the device itself, the virtual device, could run pretty slowly. One option that I found that kind of helps to also speed this up is to activate the host GPU. We'll have the virtual device also tap into the graphics processor, not just the CPU, the central processor. We'll have it also tap into the graphics processor. And I have found that when you, when you try this on a computer and it doesn't quite work that well, turning on the GPU speeds it up a lot. So after all of this setup, you can click OK. You can change your name, yeah, if you want to call it, you know, simple Android device or anything, you can do that. I'll just leave it alone as Android Virtual Device 3.2. Yes? 
So we create the uh, virtual device, um, the RAM. It only uses the RAM when you're using the virtual device, correct? Or does it take up your RAM? It only uses it exactly. When you launch that virtual device, it's going to grab it for itself and hold on to it. But if you're not running it, it's free for anything else. I get some feedback and it says you did this, you did that, you activated this, you activated that. Great. Just click OK. And now it takes you back to the virtual devices. And the Nexus one that was built in, I have this 3.21 I just created. Click it and we'll click Start. <coughs> actually boot it up. Yes, I'll see you one moment. Uh, start that. These options here, don't worry, just click launch. Wait for that to start up. And yet another virtual device that boots up. So obviously there's a lot of little things that can happen. Anyone having any trouble? Anyone have a little? Mm -hmm.
Yeah, so that's so what I would do. Is, uh, well, have you tried cancel on your list? Yeah, I tried. This is why I feel the visible. I tried to do something on your list, so I changed and tried to It might be this computer, yes, if you've done the same thing more than once and it didn't work, maybe it's just bouncing the computer in use because I do see it sometimes. Yeah, this one is this one. So I thought I could come out with the valuable, it's like copying the rest of the screen. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you. So it took a moment, a little bit of setup. Hopefully it's working. If not, All right, so the, um, this process, this process you, you see here, it takes a little bit of, of, uh, of setup. And the point of this is to have the software all set up so that we can use these devices. Here's the, here again is all of the, the virtual device. Remember this. So it happened to work this time for me. Remember last time mine was crashing, it didn't let me run my emulator. This time it did, so I, I don't know why. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, sometimes restarting it will, will help it. But here I'm um, just running the emulator very quickly just to show you that you know it's it's running. All of this ultimately came from the command prompt. Right, I typed Android, that opened the SDK. In the SDK I went to to tools, and then in the tools I created the emulator. So if I were to close this command prompt, that would shut down a little too much. That would probably shut down, it shut down my SDK, 
manager, but I left my, my virtual device running. So the, uh, the virtual devices are very useful, but again, they're limited because they're virtual. You won't be able to test every aspect of them. We can test the rotation and such, but we won't be able to do vibration and a very good GPS and any of that. That's why we have the virtual device, uh, the real devices, and we have a class set of 10 to, to give to people, first come, first serve. If this is all working, um, that's good. If it's not, we're about to take a break. Um, all that we're trying to do here is coming from this documentation. So uh, check your documentation. And we're going to take a break at 7.10. We'll be back at 7.20. Try to get some of this to work. If not, call me over. And then at 7.20, we'll start to work with this to create uh, our starting point template to then create real apps. So we're back at 720.